Eric is an independent filmmaker. He'd love you to play a mad doctor in a crazy indie movie. I felt like Michael should be happy. Michael is the only person that gets paid. I have an Emmy Award and I don't ask for a dime. Well, he found it in a garbage pail. Imagine one day getting a call saying, Mom, I'm about to get pulled over by the cops. Pray for me. Can you imagine this day and age? What's going on with Black Lives Matter? This is Judge Jerry Springer. The plaintiff is journalist Michael Musto. He claims he was cast in a series of low-budget films for $200 per shoot day, but that figure dwindled to $100 a day, so Michael decided to stand up for himself. He's suing for $500. Defendant Eric Rivas says he felt lucky to get someone like Michael to be in his films, and he valued him so much that Michael was the only person to get paid. Eric claims the COVID pandemic cut his budget to the breaking point, and he owes nothing. In full disclosure here, I know the plaintiff, Michael. For those of you who don't know, was a columnist for the uh, Village Voice. But on this case, please know that you've chosen to come to this court, so. I will be objective, but I just wanted you to know that. Sure. I didn't want to Thank pretend you. that I didn't Thank know. You, Your Honor. Nice to see you. Are you uh, sure you can't be swayed? Yeah. <laughs> well, I would have been, but then I saw your jacket. <laughs> <laughs> you also didn't see me enter and stand in the wrong place. Uh, oh, yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> no, it's a very nice jacket. Somewhere there's a Holiday Inn without a curtain. But anyway. <laughs> And that's where we're staying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's where you're That's actually staying. a curtain, Your Honor. That actually is the curtain from the hotel. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he sewed it up quick. OK. But we'll, we'll deal with the case now. Well, Judge Jerry, as you know, I'm a longtime journalist, but I'm yes. also a big ham. So I was yes. actually delighted in 2015 when a mutual friend of Eric Rivas and I contacted me and said, Eric is an independent filmmaker. He'd love you to play a mad doctor in a crazy indie movie called Vamp Biker's Tress, the third part of a trilogy, sort of like The Godfather, but not yes. really. Yeah. <laughs> a little lower budget. Um, I make films really for the love of it. I don't make any money, really. Sure. I, I did some math on what I made in the past four years with four films on Amazon, and, and it comes to $400. It's really $800, but I owe $400 for the closed captioning. So I've made $400 to date, which probably would be maybe some pizza on, on the set sometime during the, those four years. You know, uh, Michael is the only person that gets paid, and you know we do think he's worth it because he's a good actor and he's also known and he draws people into our film. Sure. Yeah. And Eric was paying me $200 per shoot. That's not exactly big money, but I'm not exactly Brad Pitt. Hey, can we see Michael act? I, I, I gave some. I would <laughs> love to see Michael he act. He did great. Your child will never see you, because you are not well. State won't let you out. We are the only ones who give angels wings. Get me an actor, an Asian. No Kung Flu. This COVID thing is serious. Be careful. It's the game of death. New York is back. We're going to get through COVID. Hey, we're going to bring you back, Moss. New York City's the place to be. New York's back. I'm back. The Village Voice is back. Backstreet's back. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, Judge Jerry. I don't even deserve the hundred. <laughs> he said it. He said it, Your Honor. He said it. He admitted it. But look, I try. I know. Eric is like a Quentin Tarantino Jr. He's full of ideas. We have fun. Yeah, thank we just... you. Yeah. He's fantastic. Yeah. He learns lines very quickly. He could pick it up and put it down and say to you, I got it. We had a good rapport, I enjoyed it. Then in 2018, Eric said, I'm doing a new movie called Japanese Borscht and I need you to play a gay mafioso. Yes. So again, that appealed to me. That sounded like a fun character and it was. We had a great rapport. This time he was paying me in PayPal, not, ca not cash in person. Right. And by the way, Eric said, oh, it's same money, same everything. But I noticed he was paying 100 in, in PayPal. And when I said something, he said something about I'm doing my best. I found that to be shady because I'm a person of my word. I've never not paid a bill, never not said anything I didn't mean or not meant something sure. I didn't say. Uh, but he seemed to want to rectify it eventually. And I thought, if I pull out of the movie now, it's going to cause problems. Now, I'm forgiving that money for that movie. Here's the problem. Last year, Eric wrote a movie called Duke of New York about COVID, and he wanted me to play a racist producer who's trying to get back at Asian people for crazy racist reasons. And I thought it was a good commentary on bigotry. Somehow, in my delusion, I thought he would go back to the 200. Uh, but he was back to the 100 per shoot. And frankly, I wasn't happy, and he blamed COVID this time. Now, the problem with COVID is 
In my case, I lost my job for the first time in many decades. I've worked nonstop my whole life. I'm not broke, by the way. I have money. I've saved yeah. money. This is a matter of principle. Also, $500 can pay like 10 yeah. months of utility bills in New York City. I do work for free. I'm an editor. So my job after I shoot the film is to go home and edit. And of course, it takes hours and time. I'm not paid, basically. He's not paid. So the reason why I, I felt like Michael should be happy just accepting what I could give him was because it's all I had and no one else is getting it. And, you know, Ismail is a second, is, is, he's an example of that. So, what is your name, sir? Hi, Your Honor. Good morning. My name is Ishmael Sekik. Ishmail, nice to the meet you, and you're an here to hand, to hand me an Emmy. Thank you well, very uh, much. I have an Emmy Award, and I don't ask for a dime. Can know, I interject in where he got the Emmy Award? Uh, he found it in a garbage pail. And One man's trash is another man's tra treasure, it, it Your Honor. It was after a hurricane. Okay. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Okay, wait a second. So you found that in a, well, in a I found it by the side of the road. It wasn't exactly in a trash can, pretty close to it. Yeah. So, I mean, it is dipped well, in first, gold. Well, first, congratulations for finding it. But, well, thank but you. Dur during you. Hurricane Sandy, and, and to, to no avail, he's tried to return it. We've tried to put it in the newspaper. It's been in different places. He even at, offered to auction it off to give money for the film. So why not pay him? Okay, during coronavirus when it hit, I, yeah. my job shrunk to like half capacity of editing of what yes. I used to do. I have a daughter. She homeschools, so I'm doing the work from home. Gotcha. So, you know, it's been tougher on me. And I just appreciate if he could wait a little longer, you know, things get better. But like I said, I- Your Honor, you know. if I may interject, um, Joey Chestnut over here, he's trying to break the records, eating hot dogs. It's not, he came on the days when it was four ninety nine, not five he's, cents per hot dog. He's talking about when we shot in Coney Island, sometimes, you know, well, every time Michael comes, we feed him. Yes. But he said on one particular occasion, he walked in and- Yeah, he's, he, he didn't leave, like, even the other cast members, they're like, where's the rest of the food? And, you know, Joey Chestnut, AKA Michael Musto over here, you know, he he just ate all the food. Well, I grew up all in a the barn. hot dogs. I grew up in a barn. All the hot dogs. But no, listen, for, for a filmmaker to treat the cast and crew to food is not really controversial. That happens yeah. even on independent sets. Yes. For me to eat one or two hot dogs, some fries, and a diet soda is not really the payola scandal of the century, is it? <laughs> Do you want the $15 back? No. Eric offered, hey, he hey, offered to treat it's me. To, and you know it's what, not $15. Judge Jerry, you know what Eric is also leaving out? He got distribution from a very big distribution company for at least the first movie, maybe the second one too yeah, yeah. also eric We're on recently amazon. Went, we have eric four films recently. on amazon on this particular suit the legality here is the fact that there was no signed agreement right of two hundred dollars so i can't tell him he has to pay you two hundred there's no contract so i can't enforce him i'm fine to with pay that the i don't want to take the suit and the suit you've got to go back to holiday inn and give him back okay <laughs> give back the curtain. i dismiss the suit thank you Thanks, thank guys. you Yana. thank what you thank you I think Eric really owes me the money, but I'm okay with the ruling because, first of all, I didn't get a signed agreement. I kept doing the movie at the lower rate. And besides, he's an artist. I don't want to take money from an artist. What was I thinking? I like working with him, and I'm uh, hoping that uh, he continues working with us. I would definitely work with Eric again. We have a kind of irascible, combative, but loving relationship that is very creative. And uh, even if we have these disputes, we always seem to bury the hatchet. and. Uh, make some fun movies. I decided that I want to do the odd couple. <laughs> Except it, it would be a gay man and a straight man living together and driving each other crazy. And we decided that Musto will kill him at the end. <laughs> Plaintiff Tamika Brown claims she lent her daughter $1,500 to buy a car to get back and forth to work. But her irresponsible daughter allowed the car to get impounded. And now she's refusing to pay mama the moolah. Defendant Aaliyah Williams claims her generous mom gave her $1,500 cash for her birthday, and she can't believe her own mother mom. is taking her to court. Mom, you're suing your daughter. Oh, yes. Why? Your Honor, my second round, terrible to 22-year-old daughter, <laughs> whom I gave money to to buy a car so she can maintain her job, gives me a call one day that her car is impounded. How'd that happen? So, imagine one day getting a call, a text message that I have right here. Yeah. Saying, Mom, I'm about to get pulled over by the cops. Pray for me. I assumed you prayed. Prayed? Can you imagine this day and age, what's going on with Black Lives Matter? So I get a text message that says, don't call me, pray for me. So what do I do? Ma I get on the floor and I pray. And I pray and I pray and I pray. I don't care what happens with anything. I just want my kid home. Sure. Did she care about that? No. 
She didn't care about that at all. Because the last, the last message I got when she finally got free of everything was they took Momo. I could care less about the car. Who's Momo? That was the name of, that she gave the car. I'm a good driver, so there's no way <laughs> I thought it would be me to get pulled over. Text message said, I just got pulled over. But I didn't think, I just didn't think what it would be me. This? And then she was ununderstanding about the whole situation as if she was never young, she never messed up before, like. Don't get me wrong, she was being, you know, responsible. She's working at a COVID testing center. But she wasn't being responsible in how she was getting there. And if she was getting there because of me, you know, because I was paying Ubers for her back and forth to Queens every day. Okay, so for her to get to her job, she had been taking Uber and you were giving her money for the Uber. For the Ubers. And then she found the car on uh, Facebook. Yeah. Marketplace. And she asked me for the money to get it. So I sent her the money. When you gave her the money, what did you say? Give me my money back as soon as you get it. You make good money. This is not a, this is not a gift. This is a loan. Okay, let's just go on that. What do you have to say about that? She did not tell me to give her the money back as soon as she can. She gave me that money as a gift for my birthday. Okay, so you're saying that she didn't say give me the money back as soon as you can. She just gave you the money. She gave me the money on January I 7th. gave you a birthday party. She this gave was a loan. She gave me a brunch in our living room. A brunch It wasn't a party like that. I had like maybe five friends over. It was nothing that serious. It was nothing That's not what my extra. pocket said. Okay, so she gave you the money. It was a day before your birthday. And you're saying Can she said- Can I tell said, you exactly what she said? Yeah, yeah, tell me what she said. Here, monkey, this is for your birthday. This is from your mommy. Invest it, do whatever you want with it. Don't waste it. That is, You girl. said don't waste it? Girl. She does it impersonation of you though. You girl. gotta admit that. <laughs> I told Ali to be responsible. That's what I gave her the money for. I said, do what you have to do. Get the car registered, get it insured, get it inspected. Because she tells me, Mom, the car came with the license plate. It should be fine. No car comes with the license plate and it's legal. She was yeah. driving with no license. I thought she even had a license. Okay, what happened? What about this no license, no insurance, no registration? Tell me about that. She's a hypocrite. One, with my insurance, she just bought a car. I was waiting for her to insure her car so that we could do the claim together. She's the one that forced me to wait to insure my car. Second, I already had an appointment for my registration. It was way past me getting my license. I just, now I have my license. I just got my license three <clears throat> weeks ago. Yeah. So. Three weeks. And then it's like, she didn't even ask, she doesn't communicate with me. She didn't even ask me, Hey, did you get your license? Are you on your way to get your license? Like, I didn't run her down for her insurance. Like, I didn't run her down. I was waiting, I was waiting on my mother. And because of COVID, oh Ray, I couldn't God, even no, push up excuse. my register. Can I talk? <laughs> because of COVID, I could not push up my registration. Because of COVID, she I got a good job. I can't bully the Department of Motor Vehicles. No. Excuses, she has a good job because of COVID. I have a COVID. great, no, I have right, a great job. Right, it's on, her choice yeah. to give me that money. She, she wanted to help me. I took it, that's my mother. That she can pay me back. She doesn't always say to pay her back. She doesn't always. Mind you, I buy her bag. But I said that. I buy her Did liquor. Did she say it this time? You're under oath. Careful. Did she say you got to pay me back? No. Was that a no? That was a no. lie. She didn't say you've got no, to pay I don't, me. I don't know. I don't know if she was drunk when she gave me the money. I don't know what was up with her. But she did not say I had to give her that money back. But she I never had to give my mother no money back my whole life. So all now I'm 22, I got to give you some money back? You didn't make her pay back on other occasions, did you? Honestly, come on. You what? Didn't. I made her pay me back, so she's paying me back for like an Uber or two. That's about it. If you were sitting where I'm sitting, you could understand why she would believe nope. that this is mom helping me out. I never, she it never was too much of an expense. It was too expensive. This wasn't an Uber. This wasn't just a, a, a $30 Uber. Then I never gave you... her a gift this daggone expensive. What about that? She never specified what to do with the money. The girl she never said, said go buy a car. A I decided to buy it. I decided I... to look for did a car she and tell buy it you on to buy, Did she tell you to buy a car? No, she... she did not tell me to buy a car. I decided to buy a car. That was my choice. She knew I was talking about it beforehand. Like, yeah, I want to save my money. Buy a car, mom, such and such. Cool. So she had been talking about buying a car. Because she was running it, up my bill. And it was her birthday. And you say, this will help you out. No. I said, I'll loan you the money. Give it back. You make good money, I just you like, can give me my money back. I just feel like she lying. But do you think now that you're a grown adult and you have a job that just out of a family relationship that you know what? I can give her some money back. I appreciate my mother for everything. 
Sure. She made me this way. True. And True. I give, I, it's not like I don't give her nothing. It's not like I just take, 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 take. I give her, my I give her money. My bank statements say different. I give her money for anything she wants. I'm on my way home from work. She called me mon monkey. Go pick mommy up a bottle of champagne. She calls you, you monkey? Mm hmm And you call your car Momo. <laughs> I don't want to hear what you call me. <laughs> but no, yeah. It's Has not this like I don't do anything affected your relationship? Yes. With, without this, we we cool without this. Come on, you love her just as much as you ever. It's like she, it's like she just, it's like she woke up money. one day and bumped her head. <laughs> okay, first of all, with your not having the insurance and those issues, even though you're right in what you're saying, it doesn't affect whether it was a loan or a gift. If it was a gift in the beginning, it doesn't suddenly become a loan because she didn't bother to get insurance. At the time the money was given, what was the intent? Not only what was your intent, but what was conveyed to her so she knew when she got it that she would have to pay you back. I wish I had that text message that I made it absolutely clear. So you're saying it was a text message. I sent her a link saying look at the car. Through a and text. You, okay, but in the text message, you said she had to pay you back. Yes, I did. You've got to show me that text. I wish the hell, she I'm so sorry. She don't got it because I never I sent so, it. I tried right. to go as far back as I possibly could. I wanted to find that text message so bad. Oh my God. Well, why would a text message be erased? Because it goes so far back. Because she's sneaky. How many years back? No, it's not that far. No, your text messages are deleted every, what, 30 or so days. My message never said that. Really? 60 days maybe, no, at the most? That should be longer. No, I, well. Well, you get a new iPhone and you log into your iPod, less, all your messages is there. I know she less can. about technology than anybody. But on my rotator dial phone, no. <laughs> on my iPhone. Once you have someone's name, it never goes away. I have years back from that particular person. You just you keep wanna, you scrolling down. You got a lot down. of time on your hands. You're a lovely lady, but you know what? That text exists. And if you're the one bringing yeah, the I suit, am. you then gotta come to court prepared with the evidence. I, I didn't wanna sue her, but she has Why to learn. Even? She has to, Why she's an this? adult. She has to be responsible. Aliyah doesn't even pay okay. for her phone bill. Here's what I'm gonna do. Good old Judge Jerry, you can't prove in this court that it was a loan because you don't have that text. That would be the proof. You, on the other hand, if you were my daughter, whoa, were you just going like this because you were afraid I'm your dad? I'm not. <laughs> no, okay. what she's doing, my father would never. You are not the okay. father. Okay, I am not the father. <laughs> I, I wouldn't need the money back if he was. Yeah. But I think it's perfectly reasonable for you to pay something towards that car. I find for the plaintiff in the sum of $500. You know you owe me more money than that. I don't owe my mom nothing. I don't owe nobody but God. I feel like my daughter's ungrateful. She has the nerve to call me a liar and a hypocrite when I do everything for her. Anything she asks for, I do for her. The one time I tell her to pay me back is the one time she gives me, you know what. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. For more Judge Jerry, click here. For more Jerry Springer, click here.